Rock and roll, right? Welcome. Welcome to my friends. We're here. We're going to talk about the options. We're going to talk about the letters. Thank you for coming over from... Uh... Oh, shut up. No, we're going to... Okay. We're going to... We're going to keep a little music on, actually, though. I mean, that's really actually quite appropriate for the Ron Coleman brand. Gang, it's, it's great to have you. Let's talk a little bit about... I put the letter up on the screen, as you see. Because that's... Uh... It may or may not be that easy for you to to see. So what I thought we would do is focus on some of the key provisions of this document. Give you my thoughts on them. Go to the comments, and maybe we'll have a little uh, a little poll. I've got time for that. Do I have time for that? Do I have a... Da, 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 da? Okay. That is that. So let's start out with what it says right up there. How did this... How did we... How did we get here? How did we get here? So the... The lawyers want us to know, as Lopez observed... A series of unwarranted, un, unwarranted, and defamatory attacks made by you and various online commentators who follow or share your views. That's really interesting. That's really interesting. They were unwarranted and defamatory. Well, if they weren't, I suppose you wouldn't be writing to me now. This is letter, by the way, was addressed to John, John Trent. They were made by John and various online commentators who follow or share your views. I assume they don't mean follow your views. I guess they is, they mean they follow you and they share your views. Okay. Let me ask you something. Why would that matter? Why would it matter whether or not the commentators who are making various online unwarranted and defamatory attacks share the views answer it doesn't it doesn't matter at all of course it doesn't matter what third parties say unless true if they're reporting a defamatory claim that my client has made that they otherwise could not have had grounds for saying, but now they're just repeating it because my client said it. I get that. But what their views are doesn't matter. What I will tell you, however, is that in the area of politically motivated defamation and cancellation, which I have seen a lot of, and which I mentioned some of the examples in which I have acted as counsel and am acting as counsel for, uh, on Valiant's show, what we often see is that this issue of your views, your views, is inserted into the proceedings frequently as early as the cease and desist letter in order to color the court's view of the worthiness of the defendant to exercise his or her constitutional rights. That, of course, is not a legitimate consideration, but it's one that a plaintiff of an ideological bent is quite likely to rely on. Let's go to the next excerpt. We demand that you immediately cease and desist. Those are those words, and we love them. We love that. We love us some cease and desist. Um, from posting or displaying any videos and or comments about Ms. Lopez and BGG. Wow. 
Wow. Can you imagine? Can you just imagine the power, the leverage that you must have as a plaintiff in a situation such as this? As I just mentioned on Valiant's show, it is absolutely, it is theoretically possible to demand of someone who has defamed you that in order to avoid legal action or in order to avoid having to pay big, big damages, that as a condition of settlement, the defaming party not ever mention you again. Now, you have to really be in a world in a world of trouble as a defendant in order for someone to make this demand of you. Because if you're in the journalism business or the commentary business or almost anything involving communications and the statement that has been described as, as defamatory is relevant to the topic that you address as part of your provision of content to the world, whether you're a newspaper, a YouTuber, whatever it is you do, for you to say, I'm not going to comment about a particular participant in the field on which I comment, that's crazy talk, okay? You're done, you're out of business, you're folding your tent. So yeah, there are situations where you can make this demand. Is this one of them? What do you think? We demand that you immediately cease and desist from posting or displaying any videos and or comments about Ms. Lopez and BGG. I think I just said that. Next slide. Oh, it's next slide. I want my next banner. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. We demand that by April 5th, let's go to the previous slide. April 5th, you remove any and all links and references to videos, whether YouTube or Twitch, or, or for example, YouTube or Twitch. Actually, IE, someone pointed out, IE means that is, EG means for example. So if you were to read this literally, it might suggest that only YouTube or Twitch matters. That's probably not what they intended that comments upon or visually depicts Ms. Lopez and or the BGG brand. Same point here. Why did they give until April 5th to do this? You know, in internet time, this letter is dated March 27th. The time between March 27th and April 5th, 2024 is a week. But in internet time, it's 500 years. I don't really know what the thinking was, frankly, but so be it. That's what they thought to do. That's the amount of time that they thought to give. And again, just to be clear, the demand for immediately was to cease and desist from posting or displaying videos or comments. And then April 5th, remove any and all links or references to videos. So this is the more attenuated content. So they're giving the my client a week to clean up its website. You think we're going to do that? Now, these defamatory public accusations have resulted, that's a typo by me, resulted in racist, sexist, and misogynistic communications at Ms. Lopez and BGG's public brand. Now, I will observe that early on in the letter, they described BGG, Black Girl Gamers Inc., here and after BGG. I don't believe they actually describe BGG's public brand why is the term public brand used here? 
Is that something different from BGG itself? It might be. This, frankly, is a technique that is legitimate for a plaintiff's lawyer to use to sort of a little bit broaden the scope of the claim and to leave it open. Let's be really clear. Let's be clear. Something that a few people have been unclear about, and I'm now going to clarify. No lawsuit has been filed. No lawsuit has been filed to our knowledge. And it's a very good bet that no lawsuit has been filed or will be filed. Moreover, a cease and desist letter is usually not a limiting factor with respect to the claims you can make. It may be. There are states whose laws of defamation require or place certain conditions on the sending of a cease and desist letter, a retraction demand. So that may limit the remedies available to a plaintiff. So it is not crazy to be a little bit loosey-goosey on your terminology for this purpose. Let's go forward. These defamatory public accusations have also resulted in various communications directed at Ms. Lopez, threatening violence against her person, that means her own self, and the company, resulting in a law enforcement referral. That means they claim to have called the cops. Now, one of my clients is Chaya Rachik. And one of the most common claims made against her is that by posting and perhaps commenting on the content that the people that she's watching put on the internet, She causes bad people, or maybe just zombies who have no free will, to do bad things. What kind of bad things? They make threats. These threats are virtually never specified or demonstrated, but they're always ascribed to the person of interest, whether it's libs of TikTok, or in this case, our friends at that park place, but that's not a rational or a, or an actionable connection in 99.9% .9 of cases. What other people do because my client has said things about you, especially if they're true things is not my client's concern. You say you've called the cops. Good. That's what you're supposed to do. Don't tell me about it. Tell the cops about it. Oh, that's the next slide, not the next excerpt. These reprehensible comments and video posts have damaged Ms. Lopez's personal reputation. That's possible. I don't know. I don't know what her reputation is. And placed her in reasonable fear of bodily harm. That's a very, very big accusation. Reasonable fear of bodily harm. She's so fearful of this that she had her company go onto Twitter and threaten my clients, which her lawyers must have told her would draw more attention to her and to the alleged defamation. She nonetheless claims that she has a reasonable fear of bodily harm which she could make part of her damages claim if she's putting her emotional state into issue in the lawsuit, which would require her not only to obtain the report of an expert on emotional damages, 
but to allow the defending parties access to essentially her entire emotional life to establish a baseline for these alleged damages. Emotional damages are not the hill you almost ever want to die on. And in the defamation case, the false accusation of discrimination levied, ah, I was in a rush, levied by you, has adversely affected Ms. Lopez's personal life and damaged BGG's business reputation and public profile. These are rather vague claims, but that's not all that unusual in a defamation case. Uh, what you're usually looking for, though, at this stage, if you're the defendant's lawyer or you're the recipient's lawyer, is some signal that there's some kind of commercially cognizable damage, something that an accountant could come in and testify about. Here is a revenue stream that was affected. Here is a contract that was canceled. So far, we're seeing rather vague claims of damages. You can make a defamation claim without having proof of damages at the outset. But should you? Now, let's not get carried away here. Let's take a look at what it says at the bottom of this first page. Please note that this law firm does not attempt to restrict legitimate free speech. I must admit, I don't usually have much concern about the, what the law firm's interests or policies are, but lawyers have a certain way of expressing themselves sometimes, and this is how these lawyers made that choice. And we believe the internet is an important medium for dissemination of accurate and truthful information. Okay, thank you for that. And for fair comment, on issues of interest. So there's some kind of save attempt here so that this letter not be used in a way that would suggest that the law firm or the plaintiff or the plaintiffs are against dissemination of accurate and truthful information or against fair comment on issues of interest. I guess this is kind of a PR move. Do you think it's a successful one? Do you think it achieves anything? Let's go to the next slide, the second page of the uh, demand letter. This letter puts all on notice, that's their capital N, that should there be further defamatory comments about Ms. Lopez and BGG, we will have no choice but to recommend, et cetera. You know, we'll have to sue you. Read that closely. The letter is saying, and again, they're, they're not really bound to this, but what the letter is saying is that we haven't recommended that and we're not actually threatening that absent future defamatory comments. Does that mean that if there is a lack of compliance to the previous demands that they can't sue? because they didn't say they would sue, but for compliance by immediately on April 5th. Not, it doesn't really mean that, but it does mean that the demand letter is a little bit vague, or maybe it's just sometimes it is useful to leave yourself an escape hatch so that you don't have to eat crow when you threaten to sue, but you didn't, but you don't really sue. Now, before we get to the comments, 
let's talk about our proposed options. Option one, we fold. We fold. This is what we shared with you guys. Uh, was it an April Fool's joke? Well, again, what we said in the first letter, these demands are reasonable, sensible, and fair. Whatever you say, we'll do it, please. We don't want no trouble. Please apologize on our behalf for the hurts and for our clients not being, you know, the right kind of people. That's option number one. And I don't know if actually I, if I can do a poll. I don't think I can do a poll at this point. We'll, we'll just we'll, we'll 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 talk it over and see what we decide to do. Option number two. A little bit more aggressive, maybe a lot more aggressive. I hope you can read this. It is a little bit tricky. Number two. I'm going to summarize it. You must be out of your mind. There's been no defamation here. Our client either expressed protected opinions, communicated facts that can be shown to be true, or which he reasonably had a basis for thinking were true, or were otherwise not defamatory. Your demand that we never mention your clients again is a tad ridiculous, to put it mildly. Remember I said I said it here and I said it on Valiant. You can make that demand and you can agree to that demand. The law won't stop you from that. But if you're a gaming website or an internet stuff website and this is your part of your beat and you announce at the outset that because you got a letter from a lawyer that you removed what would otherwise be a germane subject of your coverage from your purview merely because you got that letter, you're done. You're finished. You're no longer in business because the next time you bother, offend, throw shadows at, name it. Someone else, they're just going to get some lawyer with equivalent credentials and experience and intimidation factor to the ones that we've seen here to write a letter. And you'll have no ground for not taking them off the table as well. You're done. That's not a policy that you can ever pursue. Another part of the response, bodily harm. Really? You're real, she's really reasonably afraid that someone's going to hurt her? I find it hard to believe because these claims are usually, I mean, come on. Somebody messaged or called or emailed these people and said, because you're hiring only black developers, or whatever the claim was. You think I pay attention to this? Because you're not hiring me as a developer, or whatever the case may be, that we're going to hurt you? We're going to hit you? We're going to yell at you? Are you crazy? Who would be so crazy? I mean, that's insane. That's insane. And if you can identify the person who made a threat like that, the world will be better off for all of us to know who it is because that is a lunatic. My client, however, has nothing to do with lunatics. 
By the way, you've been changing the website, haven't you? You've been deleting stuff. You've been moving stuff. You've been closing parts of the website down. And you thought we wouldn't notice? You thought we wouldn't have screenshots? You thought we wouldn't be keeping an archive? As they say in the appellate courts, this was error. You sure you want to knock on that door? You don't want to knock on that door. And as I mentioned before, I mentioned on uh, Valiant, Virginia amended its anti slap statute just a couple of years ago. And, uh, you guys say that you may have no choice but to recommend some legal something. Well, you might want to take a good look at that statute before you make such recommendations. Okay, so this is the rubber hose option. Do you think this is a better option than the first one? And now the one that was alluded to right before I left Valiant Option number three. Yep. Stop wasting my time. This is the essence, essence of the letter. It's one sentence. The other two sentences are just bookends. We've reviewed your demands and on consideration find them both meritless and ridiculous. Goombay. That's what we're saying. That's what we're saying. Okay, I'll level with you. I'm a member of the bar and I have a responsibility under the ethical canons to be truthful in my communications with the public. We never really intended for a moment to send the first letter. It was an April Fool's joke. Now let's talk about number two versus number three. Let me take a look at some super chats. Let me first get rid of this banner. Bye bye, banner. Banners. Hide. Thank you. And let me tell you guys, I hope you didn't think that I was uh, excessively excited here. But let's take a look at the Super Chats now. Marcus, thank you for joining. One thing you, you can be confident about, Marcus, I'll never deny being a real YouTuber. Marcus thanks me for never being crossed by, which he means subject to cross-examined by me in court during my his law enforcement days. This ought to be interesting. And remember, everyone, yes, unlike Ron Coleman, Mexican Iron Man is a great YouTuber. I will tell you guys that cross-examination is about as much fun as a human being can have with his clothes on. Thanks again, Marcus. You are the best. Elijah, is this not a Rule 12b-6? It would be a Rule 12b-6 in all probability, but we don't really know because we don't have a complaint, and it is my sage considered opinion that I just call myself sage. I think I can that there will not be a complaint. But, you know, you never know. Is this live? Thank you for joining us. You've been an incredible addition to my world. Mark, 25-year veteran claims adjuster. This is the first time I've ever cheered on a lawyer. You know, Mark, I appreciate that. But like you, I've always known that I'm not like other men. 
nor am I like other lawyers. Thank you. Chipmunk of Vengeance, you are a dangerous chipmunk. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, gifted five lawyers, Fat Stephen J. F. G. Stephen, get in shape. Is this live? Throwing it around, throwing that money around. You're the best. Thank you. Is that live? That park place. I thought we agreed to nuts. Well, it is. Okay. Well, nuts would be the, the third option. And that is a very, very strong vote from that park place. And we got to take that seriously. Russ Newhouse. I like a man with a, with a, a caricature, uh, a caricature icon. So uh, we've got to take that seriously. Russ, thanks for joining. Oh, Popeye Pete. I wish I could do a Popeye laugh, but I can't. Sexy, sexy discovery incoming. Very excited. I don't think so. Discovery only comes when there's a lawsuit and when that lawsuit proceeds past the motion to dismiss. And I'm kind of thinking neither of those things is going to happen here. Marcus is just out of his mind. Thank you, my friend. Is there a possibility that any a, and government firm, a government firm may take their case on as part of the TikTok law? Cyrano, there's no reason for us to go do something crazy like trust the government. So countersuit for frivolous litigation possible? Yeah, if there's a lawsuit, it's possible. There would, could definitely be a, um, a lawsuit for or a counterclaim or a motion, depending on the law state of the law involved, the law of the state involved for anti-slap sanctions. Uh, you might want to look at my Ron Coleman lessons on counterclaims. There's really no such thing as a, as a countersuit. It's called a counterclaim. I don't want to be pedantic. It makes a difference. And I explain why in that fantastic YouTube episode. Kaya as in lives of TikTok. Yes, absolutely. She's my bud. Valiant, thanks, thanks for kicking in. So we have ruled out that Stevens' new phone who dis idea. No, we have not. It's exactly where we ended up. I am he he really really stepped on my line there, I gotta say. According to our lawyer, Ron is my friend. That's right. Even more than the principal is your pal. Valiant, out of control, 50 memberships. Think of all the disadvantages, the disadvantaged, unequitably treated, and incredibly diverse people who can benefit from Valiant Renegade's 50 Ron Coleman memberships. Thank you, Valiant. You've been a great friend. What do we know about MCO? Looks like a big firm. I don't know about that. Valiant, that's, I don't know if that's another 50. I'm there. Oh, yeah, no, it's not another 50. Let me, please. Brit, 50 bucks. I have not, no, I don't, I have not, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to give Brit the benefit of the doubt here. For 50 bucks, you get that. Is Ms. Lopez saying that she never had a racist, sexist, or misogynistic communication directed at her before the article? I've had all those directed at me, and I'm not well-known in the gaming community. Yes, Brit, but you actually enjoy them. Team Neil 89, AK dislikes puns, five bucks, that park place. Lies and hearsay, no such friends exist. The internet told me so. That is the kind of thing you learn in discovery. But I don't think we're going to ever get there. Marcus, again, for another 10 bucks. Dissemination and accurate and truthful information. Am I wrong in stating, says Marcus, that even our government lied to us a couple of years using these exact same words? Marcus, the government lies to us every single day. Valiant? Of course he did. Of course he's a member. Are you kidding? Here we go. Thank you, Comics Dad. Never give up, never surrender. I don't know what those words even mean. Fat Steven, there you go. New phone, who it is. Be, truth be told, my grandmother was Zulu. It's not for me to say. And if she was, 
There is nothing wrong with that. Be proud. Christopher Will, thank you for all the giftings. I want to see an official response. So my conclusion basically bite me. Britt, you can you can let my clients uh, they that won't be the, that'll that's kind of an official response also, but as a lawyer, I don't think I can roll that way. Remember, we're still trying to figure out number two versus number three. Personally, I'm waiting for the famous Ron Coleman lean in to tell them the way it is. What do you think? You, you think I may be done that tonight or not? I'd like to know. Marcus again. Marcus, the good thing about Marcus is that he recognizes the relationship between money and communications. And as a person who makes a living on just that relationship, Marcus is my favorite. Can some pound sand stickers and t-shirts be added to the response? I think it would be a nice consolation prize for them. Those cost money. Called it. You did. You did that, Stephen. You did. And I wanted to choke you. Three. Terry votes for three. Thank you, Scott. Welcome to the club. Thank you, John. Welcome. Welcome to the club, Lucy. I can say that I'm Cuban. Can you give them option three? And if they respond, you give option two with the receipts. See, that's um, the thing. That's the thing. Thank you, Scott, for joining again. Okay, uh, there's Marcus again. Can you demonstrate the lean back of the chair power pose? It's truly an epic sight to behold. <laughs> Is this what you mean, Marcus? If so, I've just done it. If not, it can be arranged. Ozma. Off topic. Oh, Ozma, you are a noticer, the good kind. Yes, street photography. You are on it. Those are my grandparents of blessed memory. My grandfather and grandmother on my mother's side walking in the streets of Warsaw. Looking quite dashing. My grandpa. Yes. There are a couple of shots like that, and I just wanted wanted them to be remembered. Excellent, Ozma. You're my friend. My gut says rubber hose. However, to quote a famous Frenchman, never interrupt your enemy when he, I do think it's he, is making a mistake. So send the third option and let them dig deeper. Base player. You, bass player, do you know that I'm a bass player also? Of course you do. Well, not lately, but I have been. And I'm inclined in your direction as well. So, Ron, as a YouTuber myself, Culture Casino, what an honor. I may be covering these tool bags. <laughs> is that a disparaging statement? I mean, it is an opinion based on observation. It's an opinion. It's disparaging, but it's an opinion. It's not actionable. I can say that with a great deal of confidence. I won a Supreme Court case on the issue of disparagement in trademark law. So it's something I'm very familiar with. Cheers, Smashy Bram as well. Cyrano, thank you for journeying me. Mark, is it disparaging to refer to this organization as do for token hire button mashers? What do you think? Rick, thank you for joining. I appreciate it. I appreciate everything about you, Rick. Flowers and candy before choking, Ron. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Or Oraxis. Welcome. Thank you for joining. Mr. Fizzy, thank you for joining. I think I have hit all the starred super chats and i want to thank everybody for joining in i actually do have to now redirect uh as promised to my friend um valiant 
So I'm going to think I'm going to have to do that from the YouTube version. Oh, but he's 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 holding by he, notify me. Valiant, tell me what you want me to do. Uh, oh, there it is. Okay, we will have. I'm going to come back as we have the supers for them. I'm trying to uh, figure out what to do here, uh, but I think I, the sense that I get, the sense of the house, is that we're going to send letter three, and. Part of the reason for that is that, of course, as was intended all along, we have already succeeded in broadcasting our views, the views that have been expressed in broadcast two. I mean, so in, in, in option number two. So they're out there. And I don't think there's any real need for us to go any further with them. But I um I don't know, I might have to let I have to let down my uh friends here and direct you all to the link directly back to Valiant because he's gonna do super chats. And I'm not entirely sure. Don't don't make us notice you. <laughs> You, three is also good. Thank you. Short and sweet. They should know they don't have anything. And I do. I Listen, they don't have anything. Let's face it. Um, your sponsor should be welcome to the internet. Bring it. Yeah. Listen, at the end of the day, seriously, guys, this is a very, very weak lawsuit. I like to say as little as possible. Uh, I have a friend who's, who is an extremely able defamation lawyer, Mark Rondaza. I did a I did a podcast with him uh, last month. He likes to go through the letter and really poke at it and poke at it and poke at it and really humiliate the other guy. Uh, not my, not my scene, not my, not my style. Elizabeth likes the compassion in number two, two and a half. Yes. All right. Well, I think, you know, I'll take all these observations back to my client. And um, let's see if I can see. I don't know how I, how I get back to my to my own live stream because you know what, guys, I've never done a switchback before. So listen, I just might have to um, disappoint Val Valiant unless he's listening. But why would he be doing that? He's got busy things to do. I want to thank you all for joining. Thank those of you who kicked in. Oh, Donald was only kidding. Thank you. Uh, everyone go back to Valiant Renegade. He's gonna he's gonna pick up the ball. Oh, you're here. Valiant. Valiant, I'm stuck. I'm not stuck. I'm in StreamYard. I don't think I can send it back through StreamYard. Head over back to Valiant Renegade. Just trust, trust, trust the plan. Okay, guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna bail out. It's been an incredible simulation of reality with all you guys. Valiant will help me, ex will explain to me how to fix the things. He is a mod. Valiant is a mod. But I believe, yeah, I'm going to, at the very least I can do is share the link, which he dropped into X. Uh, so, copy, copy link address. And it's going to go something. Am I Sue? I am. I really am. Catch you later, guys. Have a great night.